Hey guys, welcome to the video. I'm Braden, and in this video, we're going to talk about how to use the Vorza diffs in the Hellfire. So I'm going to start by giving you a comparison. Um, I will show you the parts you need, including sharing a parts list. Um, and then I will do a step-by-step -step of the install into the Hellfire. All right, so the first question, I guess, is why would you do this conversion? Uh, it's very simple. Uh, there are no parts available for the Hellfire. Um, it's a discontinued vehicle. Um, although you can find certain parts here and there, uh, some of the essential parts are quite difficult to find, including this 10 tooth pinion. Um, I considered making some custom parts for this, but um, I decided not to as I don't think it's worth it because of the smaller quantity. It would be quite expensive. Uh, and as you know, HPI Racing released the Vorza series uh, again last year, um, so part support for that platform has returned, and it made sense to use something that is already in production. So um, after talking to friends and a few customers, I, I found out that these are quite similar in dimensions. So um, as I have the Vorza and the Hellfire, I started to compare these two diffs and found that they're quite similar. So it turns out that this is quite an affordable way to, to convert your Hellfire and keep on using it without making custom parts. Yeah, um, I don't know about you guys, but I always worry about finding parts for platforms like the Hellfire, especially if they're discontinued. So. Whenever I see something pop up online, I buy it, and now I have quite a few spares for the Hellfire, which is good. So I feel a bit better, but uh, I know some of you don't have many spares for the Hellfire, so I think this will be a good alternative for you. Right, so um, let's move into the comparison now, and I'll show you the similarities and dif differences between these two. Okay guys, let's compare these differentials. So at the top we have the Hellfire and here we have the Vorza. The Hellfire is a 42 tooth uh, ring gear with a 10 tooth pinion. Uh, they are both zero cut gears. Uh, the Vorza is a 43 tooth and a 10 tooth pinion. So both spiral cut gears. Um, the overall dimensions are very, very similar. Um, some some parts are uh, 0.5 millimeters difference, so very, very close. And some of the features are different. For example, there is a, a small pocket here on the top of the Hellfire gear where the spiral one does not have that. But the overall design is very similar, um, including the out, outer diameter, which is uh, very close within 0.02 millimeters of each other, actually. Right, uh, so with these diffs, for them to be compatible, it's important that the uh, bearing positions are the same or similar. And in this case, they are. Um, the Vorza diff is only 0.5 millimeters shorter from here to here than the Hellfire. So this means it will fit into the casing, no problem. All right, now with the pinions, they both have the main shaft as eight millimeters in diameter, but the Vorza has the smaller portion at the end here at five millimeters for the cup joint, the stock cup joint to fit, as you can see. Yeah, uh, this diameter matches a lot of Kyosho parts so um, this is, uh, there are some parts you can buy that will fit this and then the fit into the Hellfire, but I will go into more detail later. Okay, so anything else here? The diameter of the uh, outdrives are the same, so the drive shafts of the Hellfire will fit in here no problem. They are basically the same part, but I guess they are just older. Um, 
maybe a different manufacturer, maybe different material, I'm not too sure. But the dimensions are the same and they will fit. Uh, the diff cases are a different part number, but the uh, overall dimensions are similar or the same. So no issues there either. Right, so this is the Hellfire casing. Uh, the Vorza diff fits perfectly in here. And no, no binding, spins freely. Okay, uh, when we put the pinion in, you can also see that the mesh lines up quite well. Um, the only issue is going to be uh, shimming the pinion so enough of the teeth is engaging with the ring gear. Right, so um, let's see, what else? Um, okay, we'll put the top on here. So they engage fine. Um, it spins, but with some shimming and with the correct with the correct shimming, you will be able to use these gears, I believe. Yeah. Okay, so now I will get into more detail about how to use the Vorza diff and pinion in the Hellfire, and I will show you step by step on how to install it and also the parts you will need. Um, so first we will start with the parts you will need for this conversion. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay guys, so let's take a look at the parts you will need to do this conversion. So uh, this is the HPI Hellfire SS. I've just removed some of the components so it's easier for you to see the drive shafts and diffs being installed. Um, here we have the front diff and rear diff. So for the front, you will need, oh, okay, so first remove, of course, the, uh, the Hellfire diff and pinion, and then split the case. And then I've already installed the uh, Vorza diff here, and I've, I've put uh, one shim on the diff case side. Um, it's a 0.15 millimeter thick, so it just pushes the gear back this way. Right, and then, <clears throat> so, um, first, as you can see, you need a lot of shims, but uh, first, you will need uh, 0 0.5 millimeters of shims. So, in this case, I've used a 0 0.3 and a 0 0.2 millimeter shim, put them together, put them on, on the gear side. So, this will go uh, near the teeth on the other side of the ball bearing, which I'll show you soon. And then after the bearings, you have 1.6 millimeters worth of shims. Yes, it's a lot. And in this case, I've just used eight 0.2 millimeter shims, but you can use a combination however you like. Um, I, I recommend using less. So you could use, um, let's see, uh, 0.3 millimeters times five, and then uh, add a 0.1 millimeter shim to make the 1.5 millimeter, oh, sorry, 1.6 millimeter total. Yeah. And then here we have a, a 5 by 10 millimeter shim that is 0.1 millimeters thick. This will hold the shims um, so this spacer can be attached. Now, <clears throat> uh, this is 1 millimeters thick. It's just an aluminium spacer I had lying around. And is to keep, uh, sort of push the drive shaft closer to the center. So the pin engages more in the outdrive of the center diff, right? But I'll show you that. Right, and then, so we will put these on here and install the center drive shaft. So this is the Kilshaw center, universal center drive shaft, uh, part number IFW, 430B, 84 millimeters long. It's it's for the uh, Inferno NP9. And uh, in the rear, we have the same same uh, parts. Once again, 0.5 millimeters of shims on the 
teeth side, so 0.3 and 0.2. You could also go up to uh, 0.6 millimeters if you wish. So you can um, add the shims, check engagement with the gear and choose the, what's best for you. And then on the rear we have 1.4 millimeters of shims uh, because we're not using this spacer here. So um, there are less shims. And in this case, I've just used, uh, let's see, I have 4.3 millimeter shims with 1.2 millimeter shim to make a total of 1.4 millimeters. And that will go on this side of the pinion. All right, and then we have the rear center universal drive shaft. Once again, from Kyosho, this is IFW431. And, uh, 110 millimeters long, so exactly the same as the uh, as the stock uh, rear um, rear drive shaft. Yeah. So I will have a complete list of all of these parts you will need on my website. Um, there will be a link in the description for you, um, including all the shims and everything. Most mostly Kyosho uh, because it's quite easy to find here in Japan. All right, so let's go ahead with the install. Oh, actually, before I do that, um, I 3D printed a custom spacer. Um, the goal here was to eliminate the need for all of these shims um, because the front is, uh, needs to be moved closer to the center. I decided to make one. Now, this is just above the minimum size requirement for 3D printing resin. So it is a little warped and deformed, and I had to cut cut some material here and there. But um, once again, I'll also make this available on my website, uh, both, of course, for free, um, free to download as a step file. Uh, you could print your own one and use it, or um, I'm also planning on making an aluminium one. So if you're interested in that, I could also make that for you. Um, the aluminium one would be much better, I think, more uh, precise, yeah. So I'll also show you how to use this. Okay, so yeah, the link for everything will be in the description. Um, yeah, please check it out. Okay, let's get started with installing the front diff and pinion. All right, so first, get the pinion and let's put the 0.3 millimeter and 0.2 millimeter shim on first then put both bearings on okay so you can see hopefully yeah next put the absolutely ridiculous amount of shims on <laughs> so yeah uh, I don't know about you, but this kind of bugs me. I like things to be neat. So having all these shims here really sort of <laughs> bugs me. So that's why I want to make something a little cleaner, like just one part that will eliminate these. Um, and I think aluminium is better. It would look nice. Yeah, nice clean install. But yeah, uh, let me continue anyway. So um, first, uh, sorry, next put this shim on. Um, it's the uh, 5 by 10 millimeter shim that will hold all of these other shims in place. Then the um, 5 by, what is it? 5 by 8 by 1 millimeter spacer. Okay, and then as you can see, the Kyosho one just fits perfectly over this diameter. Put that on. Tighten the screw. So I won't be running this yet, so I'm not going to Loctite anything. Um, I do plan to run it in the future, and when I do that, I will Loctite everything. Right, so now put this in. And look at that. Nice. So as I said uh, just before, you could play around with the thickness of shims here to change the engagement, but I feel like the backlash is pretty good. And once again, I will run this and check. Um, I am a little concerned by 
the size of the teeth on this 10 tooth pinion. I mean, they do seem to hold up with the flux Warza, so it should be okay with the uh, Nitro. Um, they are quite small, but the engagement is good, the backlash is good. Yeah, all right. And then let's put the cap on. All right. Okay, so you can see it works quite well. And I like this Kyosho drive shaft, it just looks clean and neat. All right, so let me stop there and um, I will go back and install the spacer that I have 3D printed to eliminate all of these parts. All right, so i just take this back off again. Uh, get my wrench. Okay. And then, so yeah, all of these parts can be replaced by just having this spacer. Right, of course the uh, 0.5 millimeters, they stay there to keep the, the teeth engaged with the ring gear. And then put this on. So it's, it's kind of a, um, has a pocket in here that fits over the eight millimeter diameter here on the shaft. Put that on. And then push it tight. All right, and then put this back on again. Okay. Yeah. So as you can see, it's kind of warped, which, yeah. For a small part, it, yeah, with the um, 3D printing, they tend to warp because they're quite small. Yeah, so now I've eliminated all of those parts. So yeah, this is available to download. You can print your own. Hopefully you have more luck with um, with the print. I just use this service um, to do this. Uh, JLC PCB is very cheap. Yeah, but I think in the future I'm going to make a bunch of uh, aluminium spaces uh, to, yeah, to replace this, I think. Yeah. So let's just um, go ahead now with the build. So you could either use the, these shims or this spacer, but the next few steps will be the same. Okay, so now I'm going to install, make sure there is a little bit of play there, which is good. Still spins free, which is nice. Okay, so now let me just tighten up the screws. All right, there's one, there's two. Ooh. I'm also concerned about this front center shaft from Kyosho. I'm sure it will hold up. I mean, it is, it is used in the MP9 for racing. So the Kyosho MP9 or MP10, so it should hold up. But the Hellfire is heavier, so yeah, that is the concern. Okay, done. Now you would just install it the normal way, so get this brace out of the way here. Okay, slide it in. Oh, that's right, I've got to put that on. Put that over there. the center diff. There we go. Okay, make sure this is engaged. There we go. Okay. So this would uh, be screwed down and hold it in place. All right. So hopefully you can see that. Um, so the drive shaft does engage um, into the center diff, but I'm still not really happy with that. I would like it to go in further, but I feel like it would be okay. And I will confirm that by testing um, because I'm limited to how far I can push the dog bone this way. I'm oh, sorry, the drive shaft this way because the screw will not engage 
uh, on the flat part. I will run out of space. Yeah, so that's the front. So as you can see, it works. It works quite well. Okay, let's do the rear. So a lot of the same for the rear. Um, get the point, point 0.2 and point 0.3 millimeter shim. Put that on first, so that's 0.5. Once again, you could uh, play around with um, a few extra shims to make sure you get good engagement, but make sure you have some backlash between the pinion and ring gear. All right, put on the bearings. All right, and then I've got 1.4 millimeters of shims, a little less than the front. You could also use the spacer for the rear, so the install would be the same. Um, you may need to add one or two extra shims just to tighten things up a bit. But yeah, you could do it, and that would also move the drive shaft further into the outdrive, which is a good thing. All right, and then, so as you can see, I'm installing or assembling everything out of the case because I want to. I want to make sure that the drive shaft is as far up as it can go for both this, the rear and the front. So make sure you do that. That way it will be a tighter fit. You want some play, but not, not tight. So yeah, here we go. So once again, it engages nicely. Um, backlash. Let's check some. Wait. Yeah. So some of you may think that's tight, but I think that's cool. It's not too tight. It's not too loose. Yeah, it works. Okay, and then put that on again, like the front, and then let's tighten it down. Where is it? Yeah. Yeah. So I was very lucky to find these Kyosho parts that fit. Uh, it seems a lot of these cars are quite similar in length, which is handy. So I just go to my local hobby shop. It's called Super Rajikon, which is like near my near my house. And they have some, they have a whole wall of Kyosho parts. So I, I buy O-rings and uh, rod ends and things like that, it tends to fit. Okay, that's done up. Okay, so this is the same as the rear, uh, sorry, as the front. Thread it through. I have more space this time. And then, oops, too far. And then slide it in as normal, put that on there, and then push it down. Okay. So, now we have all. So, if you can see here, you can see the engagement is still quite shallow. Um, it could be deeper, um, but I think that will be fine. And I will check. I will run, run the truck like this and see how it works. Yeah, so that's the install complete. Now, um, let's do... So next, let's add, let's just do the front and let me show you here. Okay, there's one, there's the other one. Oops, wrong way, there we go. Okay, so that's in, and then we need to put the front on. So luckily, um, due to, I guess, standardization or standard size, the drive shafts, the stock drive shafts of the Hellfire, the diameter of this ball is the same as the Vorza outdrive, so they will fit nicely. So let me show you. Or maybe this way. Grab the other one. Okay, put this in here. And then put that there. Wrong way. <laughs> Wrong one. Okay, here we go. 
right, so put that on there. Make sure the uh, drive shaft lines up with the out drive. Okay, and then do it. Okay. So I don't know if you can see that. Let me bring it up a bit more. But it fits. Yeah. So that's how we can use some off-the-shelf parts to um, convert the Hellfire to use the Vorza diffs and pinions. Uh, so yes, I do. I do think it's a bit messy and uh, it's not perfect. I mean, the shims that you need, um, it, the number of shims you need is quite excessive. And uh, but yeah, I think an aluminium spacer of some kind would be a little cleaner. So um, I would I will get those made and and check those as well. So there will be more videos on this project coming in the future. Um, the next one being uh, running. So I will run it like this. In my I have another Hellfire. Um, it's a SS. RTR combination, um, so it has different parts from different things. So I will run them in that one because that's the one I run. This is this is just uh, a shelf queen. I'm um, just a brand new SS that I want to keep clean and new. So I won't be running this. But uh, yeah, I will put the do the same process and put them in my other Hellfire. Yeah. So um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please check out my website. Uh, in the Draco store, I will have the uh, step file spacer you can download for free. I will have a PDF of all the parts you will need that you can download for free. And I've also added another part. It's the uh, Draco ESC, uh, ESC mount for the Super 5SC Flux. So check that out. That's also free. Yeah, and thank you very much for watching. And stay tuned for the next video where I run this convert, uh, run the Hellfire with this conversion. All right, see you in the next video.